أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي فالحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Once again everybody السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, I'm going to take five minutes and I'm going to do something that I was going to hold off until the end. But since we brought up our Prophet ﷺ and his enthusiasm towards the learning of this story. Rasulullah ﷺ, it said that this surah was given to him in one of the hardest years of his life. He lost his wife, who was a major support for him, Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. He lost his uncle, who was a financial, social and political support for him, uh, Abu Talib. Right? So the Meccans are now, you know, no holes barred. There's nothing holding them back from attacking him and going after him and physically torturing him. And, you know, he's already going through the mental and emotional anguish, anguish of having lost his partner and having lost his uncle. And on top of that, Makkans are at their worst now. This is one of the worst years in the Makkans seerah of the Prophet's life. And in the midst of all of that, Allah decided to give him the story of Yusuf salam. From the Arabic etymology point of view, the word Yusuf is said to be tied to the word Asaf, which means sadness. So the one who experienced sadness is what they say from the Arabic point of view is the meaning of the name Yusuf. Inshallah, in another session, I'll share with you the Hebrew meaning of the word because it, it's originally he, uh, Hebrew. Now, what's remarkable about the story is Yusuf is going to go through a lot of turmoil, a lot of sadness. And in the end, he's going to see peaceful resolution. Now, Allah has been telling Rasul the story of Musa a lot. And he's been telling him about the Fir'aun a lot. You guys know that, right? Allah talks to the Prophet about, about, about the Pharaoh quite a bit. Now what happened with the Pharaoh at the end? He drowned. It was a violent end, right? And the Rasul is worried every time he hears Fir'aun and the violent end. Why? Because he doesn't want that for his people. He loves them. He, 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 he doesn't want to see anybody destroyed. And he's the final messenger. If he sees his people destroyed, who's a, what guidance will be left after him? So he's, he's wanting a peaceful resolution. You find at the, at the end of this, this remarkable story, please pay attention to this part. This is a little, little bit crazy, but I got to tell you, because you know it's Facebook, it's okay. So this happened about five, six years ago. I was flying from London to Manchester. My friend uh, Fahim was Sheikh Fahim. Uh, was flying with me. I have the habit of passing out on a plane before it takes off and waking up after landing. It's my thing, right? So the, by, by the time they say, "Can I get you?" That's it. And then, sir, we've landed. Get off. That's that's the thing. So Alhamdulillah. Uh, but in the middle of my flight, I woke up, and I turned to Fahim and I said, "They're all connected." And he's, Fahim's like, "What's all connected?" I said, "The dreams, the three dreams in the Quran. They're all connected." He goes, "What are you talking about?" Where did you read this? I was like, I didn't, I didn't read it. I saw it in a dream. <laughs> so he's like, what are you talking about? So I explained it to him. There are three dreams in the Quran. The dream in this surah. What's the dream? I saw 11 stars. The sun, and I'm talking about dreams of the prophets. Not the dream of the king, the fat cows, and the skinny cows. Dreams of prophets. There's the, the dream of 11 stars, the sun and the moon. Yeah. There's the dream of Ibrahim alayhi salam that he sees he's slaughtering his son. Yeah. And then there's the dream of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi He's making hajj. Shaving the head and making the hajj. Yeah, there's three. And I saw in a dream that they're all connected. I literally saw this in a dream. <laughs> and I share it with Fahim. And I'll share it with you. Because I'm still, after waking up, it's not just a dream thing. I, I do believe they're deeply connected. Ibrahim alayhi salam saw the dream that he's slaughtering his son. Which eventually became a ritual of the hajj. Yes? So when the Prophet ﷺ saw the dream that he's going to be making hajj, it meant that he's going to be conquering Mecca so he can peacefully make hajj. And when you make hajj, what do you do? You slaughter the animal. When you slaughter the animal, you are fulfilling the legacy of your father, Ibrahim ﷺ. The dream your father saw so many thousands of years ago, its destiny has been fulfilled by the dream of the Prophet ﷺ seeing that he's making the hajj. Because that slaughter was meant to become the ritual for humanity every single year. At the occasion of Hajj, you see the connection between those two. So the dream of Ibrahim alayhi salam is actually come to full fruition in the seerah, in the end of the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Okay, so that's one part. 
And of course, we call this the religion of our father, Ibrahim. So there's an obvious connection. But what about Yusuf alayhi salam? Yusuf alayhi salam saw a dream that he sees 11 stars, the sun and the moon. And by the way, Yusuf is the son of Yaqub, who is the son of Ishaq, who is the son of Ibrahim. So Ibrahim has two lineages. One lineage, he sees the dream that he's slaughtering his son Ismail. The other lineage, his great-great-grandson sees a dream about 11 stars, the sun and the moon. But both dreams are in, from the two lines of Abraham, right? So one line of Abraham, the dream of slaughtering his son, we see how it's connected to the Prophet ﷺ. But what about this side, the other lineage, the Israelite lineage of Abraham? From, in this dream, he saw 11 stars, the sun and the moon, prostrating. And how was that interpreted in the end? What was the reality of that dream? He was able to overpower his brothers. And then when they were overpowered, they fell into sajda. And he said, this is what my dream meant, right? When the Prophet ﷺ fulfilled the dream of Ibrahim, when he fulfilled the dream of Ibrahim, he conquered Makkah. When he conquered Makkah, he overpowered his brothers, the Quraysh, who had expelled him. And the suggestion was kill him. But they were happy also to expel him. Which is exactly what Yusuf's brothers did to him. And then finally when Yusuf ﷺ had power over his brothers, he has the right to punish them now. What did he say to them? He said, لا تثريب عليكم اليوم. It's in the Quran, in the Surah. No harm shall fall upon you today. No harm shall fall upon you today at all. On the day of the conquest of Makkah, the Prophet ﷺ is on the pulpit. His brethren who tried to kill him, the Quraysh, are standing there on trial. And he said, I will say to you today what my brother Yusuf said to his brethren, لا تثريب عليكم اليوم. No harm shall fall upon you today. The legacy of forgiving your brothers and reconciling and they all accepted Islam, what happened in Makkah, at the conquest of Makkah, is actually a reiteration of the interpretation of the dream of Yusuf which is why the Prophet himself quoted Yusuf at the time of the conquest of Makkah. All of the dreams are related and what that tells you is from both lines of Ibrahim the line of Ismail and the line of the Israelites, all of them culminate, the completion of both of those lines is in Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They're all connected. They're all just tied together. So when the Prophet, and he doesn't even know that yet. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam doesn't even know that yet. But clearly Allah is giving him comfort through this surah in the hardest part of his life. And when finally he has relief from it, he's going to be saying the words that are in this surah. The words that the one who went through discomfort in this surah found at the end to forgive his brothers. He's going to say, copy the exact same brothers at the end of those 23 year career at the, at the conquest of Makkah. Subhanallah. So, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ بِمَا أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ وَإِن كُنْتَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ لَمِنَ الْغَافِلِينَ Even moments before this, you had no clue. You had no clue how tied you are to this man who you have not, no knowledge of. You, have, you were completely unaware. Others say, well, the Prophet ﷺ, obvious meaning, the Prophet ﷺ does not know Hebrew or Aramaic, he doesn't have access to the Jewish scriptures, so how would he know the details of the account of Joseph, of Yusuf ﷺ in this way? You yourself had no clue of this whatsoever. It is we that are telling you the story. This isn't you telling the story. We are the ones that are telling you the story. نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ so with that, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to conclude today's session. That was ayah number three, and that gets us ready to actually enter into the story of this remarkable, incredible Prophet Yusuf alayhi salam and his family. So uh, we'll start tomorrow with the story. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim. Wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa dhikr al-Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.